Hi. So the other day I saw somebody on Reddit asking how you can create this kind of effect where you have the mountainside in one color or texture and then maybe grass on top of all flat surfaces. And since it seemed interesting, I figured I might as well make a video about it. So first thing, let's remove the current shaders. So here we are, shaders gone. All we still have left is a light node and two blank meshes. One I exported from Blender with this kind of smooth terrain. The other I exported from Blender with a rough kind of chunky mesh terrain. Let's go into the chunky one first. Swap the order. There we go. Let's go into the chunky one first. And let us add a shader. Let's see, we can go onto the mesh. In the mesh, we have a material. Let's add a shader material, visual shader, and let's see what we can do here. So, simplest thing, we want some colors. Color constant. There we go, color constant. Let's just make a second one. Let's make one some kind of green, one some kind of brown ish sort of color. Uh, let's start out by making everything green. Okay, so shaders working and now we can actually see what we're doing. Now, how do we sort this out? To figure out where everything is, there's a few things we need. We need to know our normals. So the normals, basically the direction a part of our mesh is facing, is what we can use to determine if something is facing up. What is the up direction? We need to define that still. So let's give us a vector constant. Let's see, where is it? Vector constant. We define what up is. Now in this project here, I'm using the default directions. So the green arrow here faces up, which means I have the y coordinate a1. Let's make this a bit smaller. Maybe zoom in a bit so we can have a better look at all the stuff happening in here. Now, so we have this up vector, we have the uh, normals for all of our positions. Let's get a dot product. Now the dot product basically allows us to get a single number um, that essentially represents how far something is away or how far our normal is away from the up direction. So that means if something is facing directly up, it's very close to the up direction. If something is facing sort of an angle here on the slope, it's further away from the up direction. So we can dot product these two. Let's see that it connects. And then we can use an if node. And the if node basically lets us see if our value is in a certain range. What do we want to do with it? So we get in our value from this dot product. And we can say if the value is, let's see, compared to 0 0.95, if our value is less than 0 0.95, we can use brown. If our value is more than 0 0.95, we can use green. If it's the same, we'll just also use green. Let's put that into our output and see what happens. And already you can see here, we have sort of a green surface on anything that's flat and brown mountains underneath. Of course, we can set this to the different numbers. 0 0.8 gives us more grass and less mountain, and that's fine. Now there's one issue here, which happens if I turn the camera. Let's make this bigger for a moment. If I turn the camera, the up direction changes. And so the areas that used to be green are now brown, and instead the sides here are becoming a bit more green in this direction and it rotates with me because this is all relative to the camera. Now, how do we take the camera out of the equation? Because we want a permanent up. We don't care about the camera. So for this, we can do the camera, let's see, inverse camera. This is a matrix that basically just does this. If we multiply it with our normal values, it lets us get rid of the camera projection. Okay, let's see. We need a transform multiplication. No, not quite transform vector multiplication. There we go. We have a transform here. We have a vector here. We multiply these two things. Uh, we actually want to change the order. We're doing b times a. Then we plug this in here. If it lets me connect the nodes. This is the one thing I don't like about the visual editor. It sometimes doesn't let me connect the nodes. Now with that done, 
I can move around and no matter how I position the camera, up remains up. So that's the uh, simple part done, because now this here you could already use just fine. It works fine, it works fine for this kind of chunky terrain. It works pretty well because each face has its own color and that works all right. Where it doesn't work as well as if we try to apply this to the smooth terrain. So let's go into the smooth terrain landscape. Actually, let's save the material here quick. Save as ABCD. I just want something I can find quick. Grab it, put it on the shader material here. There we go. Same material. And here you can see it kind of works in terms of the direction, but it has this kind of very rigid line on where it suddenly goes from green to brown or from one texture to another if you're using textures instead. The way to fix this, let's just go into the shader again. The way to fix this is we want to take this dot product and uh, use it in a few more locations. So first we can mix these two colors. Let's take mix S. This gives us another value down here we can use to give a weight to it. Let's connect these. Uh, it's not letting me again. There we go. Now what we see here is a greenish brownish in between color. If we change this here to 0 0.8, it becomes more brown. If we change it to 0 0.2, it becomes very green. I just keep it at some number for now. It doesn't matter. We're not actually going to use the number itself. Because what we can use instead is we can use a version of this dot product again to determine which color we want to use and make a smooth transition. So first, let's go set this to 0 0.95 again. Add a second if node. Same thing again. Move all of the stuff to the side a bit so we have some space. And the output of this here is now going to be the input down there. So basically, if our value is above this 0 0.95, we just get green. If our value is below whatever this value is going to be, let's just set it to 0 0.7 then we can just take brown. And in these two cases here, in the case that it's basically in between the 0 0.7 and the 0 0.95, that is where we want to use our mixed color. Let's see, we still need to use the dot product here as well, of course. We're still comparing to the same value after all. And now if we go in here, you can see that it's not quite what we want yet, but there are three colors now. Where before there was just green and brown, now we have green and brown and something in between. Now we're going to smoothen that. To smoothen that we need to change this number here from the 0 0.4 we have right now to whatever this here is going to give us as a transformation. Let's make a bit more space and see what we can do. If we just put the dot product in here directly, you're gonna see that there is sort of a transfer, but for one, it's in the wrong direction. For the, to swap the direction is uh, simple enough. We just swap these two colors here. Brown on top, green on the bottom, easy. Now it is uh, doing the correct thing, but it's not soft enough. It starts cr properly in the green and then still kind of falls off very quickly, uh, very suddenly. So to make this actually fit the scale properly and take up the entire range, we need to account for these numbers. So the range we actually can be in is between 0 0.7 and 0 0.95, because these are the numbers we set here. That's in between these, the gradient should happen. But all of our numbers are always between 1 and 0. So to account for this, we need to take this dot product and first of all, make it smaller. So we can subtract the 0 0.7 from it. That way we get a number that will link up correctly on one side. Let's hook this up instead here. Now you can see it actually transitions smoothly on the side of the brown, but it doesn't reach the green anymore. It's the, the brown transition side is correct, but the green transition side is too weak. To deal with that, we now need to take this range and make it cover the entire 0 to 1 range. So currently it goes from 0 to 0 0.25 because the difference between 0 0.7 and 0 0.95 is 0 0.25. So we can just multiply it by 4. 
And by multiplying it by four, it should cover the entire range. Let's see if it allows me to do that. There we go. Now we have our green areas that are properly green at the top and then a nice smooth transition from green to brown in the other areas, which also works the same if you're using textures. So the one texture is going to blend over into the other one. And there we go. Now it looks fairly all right. Of course, you can play around with the details a lot more to make it look just the way you like. But here it is with lighting, a smooth version, and a more rugged, pixelated version. There you go. This will be all for today. Bye.